what we are interested in right now is the rates. Right? So that's one of the big things in calculus is really the rate of change. And in, of course, in algebra, if you have a straight line, it doesn't matter where you take these two points, you do the slope as the change of y over change of x, and it's constant. However, uh, as I previously mentioned, um, not everything is this way, and many applications, you know, and in the real world, uh, social science, engineering, and everything else, uh, you get different curves. So if we just stay in algebra and we get a curve like this, uh, how would you calculate the rate of change, uh, you know, in, an, in a place that you're interested in? So if I'm interested here, uh, well, based on that formula, you can do the slope, which is this of the second line. And let's say this point is A, and you take another point x, then you do the slope, f of x, you know, the, and f of, minus f of a uh, over x minus a. So it's not gonna be accurate, then you, start, you, you try to get closer, because the closer you get, the better um, idea you're gonna have under that rate at this point a. Right. So you try to get x closer to a, which means your x approaches a. So this kind of a slope becomes a limit as x approaches a. And you know, from here we're going to get to the derivative. The other way we did this is uh, we described this distance as h, the how far is and we say if this distance, you know, you take now this point, now it gets smaller, then you take this point, then it gets smaller, uh, and this step here is h. In that case, we defined it using the quotient formula. Um, we want h to be as small as possible to be right next to a, and in that case, we say the a plus h, the step, minus f of a over h, all right? So this is kind of what will take us to the derivative. Right now we'll try to understand, um, you know, as when you get as the best picture is the tangent line, right? So the slope of that tangent line, right? Um, is, is found by taking this limit. So you see we transition we're doing the average, then uh, we're getting closer, and we did examples in the homework where you take, you know, if the goal is A is four, you take five, you take 4.5, 4.1, 4.001, .001, to see how the, the rate is getting closer to the, the value, to the target that we want, to the instantaneous. So if we really want the average now to go to instantaneous um, at A, now we're gonna use these limits. And let's uh, do a, a simple example. Uh, let's take a function x squared, and I'll show both of them so they both click. Um, and let's say uh, one. All right, so f of one is gonna be one squared, which is one. Right. But uh, now we'll ask what is um, the slope there? All right, so if you want to do that, uh, you know, you, you st you're gonna use, like I mentioned, the two points in that, and it's not gonna be accurate. So you would use one of these formulas. So let's say, use the first one. You're going to say the limit as x approaches 1, which means you're going to take a point a little bit closer to a and h uh, and x approaches 1. Of that point, f of x, whatever that point is, minus f of 1, 
over x minus 1. So the limit of x approaches 1. f of x is x squared, right? Uh, minus f of 1, which is 1, over x minus 1. And this will simplify to uh, x squared minus 1 is x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1. And we get it's the limit of x plus 1 as x approaches 1, uh, which we can do a direct substitution, 1 plus 1, which is 2. So the slope there, or the rate of change, or how the y value changes comparing to the x value at that place of one is two, right? So you see, um, right, so the slope there is two. Um, how the other formula can be changed uh, or can be used uh, similarly. So now, so you see the difference uh, because, you know, for example, the homework, you use this one or you use this one. Most likely, you'll be using this second one in, in most cases. But uh, you need to know the difference. So if this one, x approaches the target, which is 1, here now, h uh, be becoming uh, too small. And so here we're going to say f of, we are interested in 1, so 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h uh, uh, f of 1 plus h so remember this is x squared so 1 plus h squared f of 1 is 1 over h so the limit uh, if we well, that one you get 1 plus 2h plus h squared minus 1 over h so limit uh, h approaches zero um, uh, of 2h plus h squared over h. And now, uh, as you did in many times in the homework, uh, you factor h and you cancel and you get 2 plus h. So now with the direct substitution of h, you get 2 plus 0, which is 2. All right, so I introduced for you the two parts, so you understand how we're getting closer to that uh, target place. So we get the instantaneous rate that we are interested in. And uh, I demonstrated if you're using that value, this one, and, uh, at, and I think that this should clarify uh, the major thing. And with the other video, you, sh you should see how the removable discontinuity works and all that. So, so the problem of finding the tangent line, uh, which I described here, um, and, uh, and I'll do an example. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll finish this one. I'll go back to the example I talked about. Well, finding, uh, for example, is similar to the one we did with finding the velocity of an object. Uh, both involve finding the same type of limit. So this special limit that we're looking for is the derivative. And next chapter will be about that. So we will see that it can be interpreted as the rate of change. As I mentioned, the rate is the big deal. Yeah. And of course, it applies to sciences and engineering. So if we look at this example, right, and we find the slope at that point is two, so the kind of slope at x equal one is two, and this point is one, one, right? So now and you, you're interested to find the tangent line, uh, which is, uh, this line that passes through there and it has that slope, right? Um, uh, how do we find it? Well, uh, so the, the equation of uh, tangent line uh, use the point slope formula 
Uh, we know it's two and the point is one, one. So uh, it's, this is a two X minus two. Then we add one, so y equal two x minus one. So when you graph the line, it's going to be something like, you know, going. You know, the correct way would be something like this way. It's it goes through negative one as the y intercept and its slope is that. So this is kind of the main idea and we'll be using in different places and all that. And once we understand really this is what's happening and the derivative is this target here, um, then we will transition to understanding the first derivative, the second one, the third one and so forth. Then when we get to the formulas, now that we start using the formulas, uh, we should have a background understanding of what these formulas do. So if there is something that repeats here, I will skip it. But uh, like here, yes, so all this, if you want to pause the video and look at the charts, but uh, they're similar to what I explained. And, um, and you, you, you know, you can just move on. Or if you need to, you can pause the video and write them down or look at the the notes, the notes in, in the file I post. Uh, we sometimes refer to the slope of the tangent line to a curve as the slope of the curve, right? But of course, at that at the point, right? Um, so what we we're doing is uh, when it comes to that target place, if you take the you know that curve there, and you zoom in, the more you zoom in, you know the it's just going to become the line that I, I spoke about. It's almost like uh, the algebra example, right? So that's, that's what calculus solves. Um, we don't really have that algebra example, but we, with the way we did it, it's like you zoom in, you zoom in until it becomes the algebra example. And this, this uh, more of this is just that talk there. And, um, you know, everything here is what I explained. And um, as so for the velocity and stuff, so it's similar thing. So let's just look at the example of the velocity. Uh, this example, before I talk about it, I think we, we previously did it in this C. I can I'll see if I can switch to the file. Um, yeah, to this file. So, so you see, you know, why we did it that way at the beginning, two point one, and now why we're doing it this way. Yeah, of course, we now we have more information. We can approach differently, but to compare the two examples, uh, here you're given uh, it's a free fall s of t, uh, four point nine t square, and we used uh, for the average velocity we used the change of position over change of time, uh, which is forty nine point forty nine. That's not uh, kind of uh, it's it's close, but not that close enough. So when you know, uh, even in the beginning, if you, if you look at this problem, you're asked for t equal five. So t is a here is five. So we just said, okay, what about 5.1? Just like that slope to come up with the second point, 5.1. Then we find something. Then we're like, okay, let's make it as close as possible. You see before here, we didn't do the limit yet. So we say 5.1, 5.05. So you see H is getting smaller. H becomes, here H becomes 0 0.01. Here H becomes 0 0.001 if in what we're talking about now. H is 0 0.05. So you see, um, 
then when we, as close as we get uh, closer, we get to the to the goal, which is forty nine. The the accurate instantaneous value. So now you'll see how we're going to find that without going through all these steps. Um, Uh, so we take this same example and uh, let's read it. Suppose that the ball is dropped from the upper observation deck um, uh, of a tower and uh, which is, uh, you know, 450 meters above the ground. So this deck is 50 meters above the ground. What is the velocity of the ball after five seconds? So uh, T is five, right? Uh, so we can follow the same thing, or we can use uh, what, what I presented as the limit. Uh, we want the instantaneous thing, uh, velocity, and uh, we want it at 5. So we can use uh, the limit uh, in general. This is the formula. And we can just, um, you know, uh, do the math on it. Uh, you can try it and see. I will do some homework problems and solve them. Uh, and um, this is in general if you want to do. Uh, so you use t plus h for t squared. This is just like the x squared problems I just did. And f of t is just 4.9 t squared. And uh, they all have 4.9, so you can factor 4.9 here, or you can, or you can distribute 4.9 either way, and you'll find uh, at the end. So you should practice this, um, you know, in your own way, and see whether you, you come up with nine, uh, this kind of formula of 4.9 times a two times h, or you should be coming up with uh, the limit of h um, 9.8 t plus 4.9 h so you should come up with this one or this one uh, at this step uh, then of course now h is zero uh, that will give us the 9.8 t and this is the the derivative formula uh, you know, that later on you will just use a formula to find. And the velocity after five seconds means t is five, and it gives us 49. So you see the, the comparison between these example from 2.7 versus 2.1. Uh, in 2.1, t is five, and we don't know, so we tried multiple multiple parts to see how close and what value we get closer to. So we tried multiple H's and we find we found that, yeah, I think it's going to 49. Here, no, we, we use the limit as H goes to zero and we found exactly the 49. So I will do some of these examples in from the homework and you'll see more. But if you follow the video, probably this is the best time where you say, uh, let me try it, and you, and you do, and you should come up with one of these. And of course, uh, now you start answering the questions, uh, especially question B. Uh, the deck is at 450 meters, uh, you know, high. So S is 450, 4.9 T squared, which will give you a, a time at 9.6. And of course, you can use that to calculate uh, the velocity of the ball as it hits the ground. Um, okay. But as I mentioned, this will, will be solved. And uh, all right, so 9.8 t. And uh, you know, when you do this, of course, you divide by 4.9 and you take a square root and you get that. And uh, that value there is gives you the velocity of the ball as it hits the ground. 
Okay, so in case you're wondering where, where this part came from, uh, don't forget that you came up with it here. Um, you know, let's uh, just so I keep the same notation, V of T is 9.80. So when it hits the ground, uh, we found that uh, it's that 9.8 second. So that, now to find the velocity at that time, whatever time you want, what is the velocity at two? You put two there, right? What is the velocity at 9.8? You put 9.8 there. Uh, it's just here they use this, which means the exact value, right? Which is the same here, a 9.6, so nine, not 9.8. So 450 over 4.9, which is 9.6. So uh, all this talk here is the velocity of time um, is 9.8. T. So uh, we found from previously that uh, it hits at 9.6. So you do 9.8 times 9.6. And I'll try it here. We do 9.6. And yeah, so 94.08, which is 94, uh, if it has to round there, meters per second. So hopefully by now, uh, I think before I keep going is that you see uh, the connection between 2.1 and 2.7. Instead of using multiple values, uh, you take the limit and you, you go towards the target value. All right, so now pretty much what we did is we defined a, a derivative, um, all right? So the definition, the derivative of a function, so if you're asked about this, uh, this f prime uh, here, it's not one, it's just f prime, uh, means uh, the first derivative. The derivative of function f at a number a, uh, denoted by f prime of a is uh, given by the, this formula that uh, kind of talked about a few more many times. And uh, of course, uh, you can go through these examples and um, give you a second think about it. And I'll explain them. And of course, I will write more when we get to the homework problems. Um, so if you have a, a kind of a function or a curve x squared minus 8x plus 9, uh, what is the derivative? You know, what is the instantaneous rate of change? at a so uh, you're going to set up now the derivative um, definition right and it's going to be a plus h minus f of a and it's just a matter of uh, algebra from there right a plus h so whatever there is x is a placeholder um, Uh, that's this step. And if it's just a, then a squared minus 8a plus 9 at this step. And of course, here, the not to forget, this negative is going to change these, right? So plus 8a and minus 9. And once you have all these, you can just start the canceling. And um, to a h stays a square is there, eight uh, a uh, and eight a and negative eight h and nine and nine. Uh, right, so you get the two a h a squared and negative eight h, and then you cancel one of each with the h, and you get two a plus h minus 8. So now let's look at the original problem x squared minus 8x x squared um, minus 8x plus 9 f of x f prime of x right x squared minus 8x plus 9 um, so this is the function 
this is its derivative uh, and of course at a so we'll, uh, if it's x it'll be 2x minus 8 but we will do that in in, in a few minutes but now for a is that and then of course if a is 1 it's 2 times 1 minus 8 so now I think this is a good transition to understand what the derivative is um, so there is a tangent line on the curve at that point a f of a um, it passes through that point and it has a slope and we can find the equation and uh, the slope of that tangent line is equal to f prime of a um, all right which is the derivative of a and just like it did in the x squared example when you want to find this uh, the equation of that tangent line uh, you see now uh, that slope that we talked about m mq or pq or something whatever it is or whatever you call the points um, i just called it before m um, it takes this place in the point slope now it's the derivative at that point a and here the f of a which is the y1 and this is the x1 so it's the same equation uh, it just now we're applying um, so watch for this in the homework problems when you're asked for uh, uh, the equation of a tangent line uh, we're going to use the point and the derivative at that point all right so now a uh, few ways to talk about this thing and this is a the same talk we did the change of y the change of x um, so uh, the average rate of change the only thing here is to to more be precise with respect to x because once we get to derivatives with respect to what right is it with respect to x to t to z uh, and you may be taking with respect to x and in in the future maybe taking the second one with respect to something else and so just a little more strengthening here the the talk instantaneous rate of change you see that slope thing uh, the x or the h the delta x here or the h going to zero or the other formula i talked about so these are uh, uh, just little more strengthening uh, the ideas and this will help you uh, understand uh, later when does a derivative does not exist so I'll talk about that of course uh, when certain properties are happening with the function and one of them you know when the slope is undefined which means a vertical line so if for some reason the function does like this the slope here is vertical you see then the derivative will, will not exist there so i'll talk about that when i get to it um, so the rate of change uh, one idea that's important here uh, when the derivative is small so let's explain these um, when the derivative is small the curve is relatively flat so think about it the slope when the slope is small uh, the curve is relatively flat and the y value changes slowly right so in is for this s f of t is the position function of particular that of a particle that moves along a straight line then the derivative at the point a is the rate of change of the displacement displacement means just like uh, the change of distance with respect to time so the derivative at point a is the velocity of the particle so this is one understanding that we need to do uh, if this is a position of a particle moving when you take the first derivative you're getting the velocity so the rate of change which we talked about many times it just now reinforces it right when you get that formula for the derivatives you're getting, you're getting the instantaneous velocity uh, you're able to figure out but if you want the speed of the particle is the absolute value of the velocity 
right? So if you want to talk about the speed, then it is the absolute value of the velocity.